What's up ladies and gents and welcome to my 5 minute guide. This time we're taking a look at Sylvanas. We'll start with a brief introduction of her skills. Her passive is called Black Arrows and allows you to disable minions, mercs and structures for 1 second with either auto attacks or abilities. Her Q, Withering Fire, is her bread and butter. It's a short cooldown single target ability with 5 stacks. It shoots nearby enemies and prioritizes enemy heroes over minions. Her W is called Shadow Dagger. It's a single target ability that leaves a dot and spreads to nearby enemies. Her E, Haunting Wave, deals damage in a cone and functions as her escape reposition and dodge mechanic. Sylvanas is a solid carry. She provides your team with good damage and allows your team to push where your team would normally have to back off. Thanks to her amazing passive, she is very strong on the Haunted Mines because she can disable the turrets and on Tomb of the Spider Queen because she can easily deal with big minion waves. As your first talent you'll be looking to pick up with the wind. This talent increases the range of your Q ability and allows you to harass opponents more easily. As you can see in this gameplay, I'm getting pressured by this Felstad, but thanks to the increased range on my Q, I'm able to harass him and push him back. At level 4, you'll be looking to pick up a Venom for the extra burst damage. Now, if you're new to this game, this might take some time getting used to, but it's worth it because it's by far the best option since the other talents really don't offer you anything. On level 7 my preferred talent is follow through. It's a solid increase in your damage output because your Q ability is on such a short cooldown. Unstable poison is fun to mess around with but your pushing ability is already amazing and its damage is not reliable during team fights. To my surprise a lot of people take life drain and I do understand the reasoning behind it because it's one of the few ways you can sustain yourself. If you're new to the game, I understand this talent pick and you should go for it. But if you're experienced, you should never be in the position where you need to sustain yourself. On level 10, you don't have much of a choice. You'll be looking to pick up Wailing Arrow. This ability deals a significant amount of damage and silences enemies hit. Now, before explaining how you want to use your ultimate during team fights, I'll take some time to explain Haunting Wave slash your E first. You can use your E, as stated before, uh, to reposition yourself during team fights. You can double tap it to dodge some incoming damage. At last, you can use it to hop over terrain and, as you can see here, gather some extra skills. On level 13, you have several options once more. The talent I'll be picking up most of the time is Evasive Fire. Evasive Fire is great because it gives you that little bit of extra utility which allows you to hunt down enemies and take a better position in team fights. Spell Shield is an awesome talent overall, but even more amazing thanks to the Jaina Heavy meta. Picking this talent allows you to make a living out of killing Jaina players. On level 16 you'll be looking to pick up Gold Embrace. This talent increases the damage taken by your enemies by 25%. You could also opt for Blood for Blood. But just think of it this way. If Valak could make enemies vulnerable with multi-shot, would you go for Blood for Blood? I don't think so. Now let's get back to your ultimate. You'd want to use your ultimate right whenever the enemy team engages or your team engages. As you could see there, Stitches grabbed Diablo and I immediately fired my arrow and this allowed us to instantly kill Karakam because Uther was silenced. On level 20 you have two options once again. You could go for Bolt of the Storm or your increased ultimate. Now I will almost always go for the increased ultimate because you already have such a high mobility with your evasive fire and haunting wave. But whenever you're playing against Stitches or Diablo with Apocalypse, I would recommend going for Bolt of the Storm. This allows you to escape their engages. Before leaving you guys, I want to help you remember to always keep trying and always keep fighting in Heroes of the Storm. You can take victories whenever you expect it to lose. And as you can see here, I thought I would lose, but 
man oh man did we make a comeback. Thanks for watching guys, if you liked this video give it your thumbs up and if you want to see more 5 minute guides in the future hit that subscribe button. You can also check out my stream where I can explain certain choices in more detail. And remember guys, always stay fabulous.